In yesterday's episode, we killed the powder gangers inside the Bison Steve Hotel, and we rescued Deputy Beagle. However, we learned that Deputy Beagle's a bit of a coward, so we gotta find a better sheriff for the town of Prim. Before we do, let's explore the other major attraction here in the town of Prim, and that's the Vicky and Vance Casino. Remember, Mr. Nash told us that it was one of the primary attractions that brought warm bodies here to the town of Prim before the Powder Gangers took over. It's a major contributor to the town's economy. It's a shame to see it in such disrepair. But who the heck are Vicky and Vance? We learn more as we explore. The big centerpiece of this casino is a ruined car on a pedestal in the middle of the casino. We see bullet holes all along the driver's side and it looks nothing like the cars we typically see strewn around the wasteland. Beneath it, we see an empty and broken case. This case was meant to hold Vance's gun. The 9mm submachine gun preserved in the glass case to the left of this plaque is the actual weapon Vance carried in a paper-wrapped box under some suitcases in the trunk of his car during his and Vicky's crime spree never fired, and luckily untouched by the hail of bullets that ended its notorious owner's life, the weapon's mint condition inspires dread in all who look upon it. Experts speculate that Vance might have killed as many as 50 people had he ever fired the gun, so long as his aim was exact and he was starting off with a full clip, or even more if he had additional ammo clips and remembered to reload. Oh, uh, okay. Taking a look at the case, it is indeed empty. The gun is gone. Well, where did it go? Well, maybe we can get some answers from this robot nearby wearing a fancy cowboy hat. This is good old Prim Slim. Howdy, partner. Welcome to the Vicky and Vance Casino and Museum. Who are you? Prim Slim at your service. Authentic cowpoke and official spokespot of the Vicky and Vance Casino and Museum. Yeehaw! <laughs> well, yeehaw indeed, Prim Slim. Hey, did you know that Vance's gun is missing? Just mose you on over to the display case and you'll see it plain as day. Quite a piece, that gun. Mint condition, never fired. Uh, yeah, I was just there. The display case is empty. The gun is missing. Have you gone loco, partner? I can see the gun with my own three photo sensors from where I'm standing right now. Something's wrong with this robot. We can pass a 50 science check to say, scan your data registry. You have been hacked. Well, look at that. I happened across this data file locked away in an isolated subsystem. He gives us the Prim Slim Corrupted Memory Block Holotape. The holotape is a transcript of the conversation that went on between the two criminals who hacked Prim Slim. We learned that the man and woman crime duo of Sam and Pauline smashed open the display case and stole the 9mm submachine gun. When Prim Slim confronted them, Pauline hacked into the robot and wiped his memory. They then fled to Westside. Huh. So it looks like if we want to recover this gun, we need to track down Sam and Pauline in Westside. Let's add this task to our list, but for now we need to finish interviewing this fascinating robot. Hey Prim Slim, who were Vicky and Vance? Where have you been, partner? Hiding under a rock? Vicky and Vance were this nation's fourth or maybe fifth most infamous celebrity outlaw couple ever. That's who they was. Prim Slim here can tell you the whole story, if you can spare a minute to hear the tale. Ah, uh, <laughs> do I have a moment to spare to hear the tale? Uh, yeah, sure, why not, Prim? Lay it on me. You got it, partner. Prim Slim loves to spin a yarn. First things first, any boss you've heard about Vicky and Vance being copycats ain't nothing but ill-tempered slander. Fact is, they begun their crime spree two days before Bonnie and Clyde robbed their first bank. So who was copying who? Now, true. Vicky and Vance didn't exactly cut a wide swath of murder and bank robbery across the central U.S. like Bonnie and Clyde did. It was more like a narrow swath of shoplifting, check cashing fraud, and gas pump drive-offs. But crime is crime. They drove reckless, too. Having lived by the gun, well, Vance owned one anyway, it was only fitting that the duo of desperados would die by the gun. 
Perhaps it was fate itself that accidentally drove them into a crossfire between police and a gang of bank robbers in Plano, Texas. Or maybe they just didn't notice until it was too late. It's been said that Vicky would have tried to cash a bad check in that bank had she lived. We'll never know for sure. All we know is that the crossfire tore the car and both occupants to pieces, and the police issued an official apology. You can put your eyes on the genuine death car just over yonder, and there's Vance's machine gun in the case next to it. Well, fascinating. A couple of Bonnie and Clyde wannabes. Well, thanks, Prim Slim. Can you tell me more about your fair town? Prim is a thriving resort community located in Clark County, Nevada, right along Interstate 15. Whether you can't wait till Vegas to try your luck, or want to hit one last jackpot before you leave Nevada, Prim's your place. The town's premier attraction is the world-famous Vicky and Vance Casino and Museum, so you came to the right place, partner. How about the Bison Steve Hotel across the street? <clears throat> the Bison Steve is one of Prim's less impressive casino hotels. I'd steer clear of that place, partner, if I were you. Rumor is the dealers over there cheap. And that rickety roller coaster is liable to fall down any day because it wasn't built to cold. Well, it's good to see these two businesses engaged in friendly competition. Now, as we explore the Vicky and Vance Casino, we see many of the town residents walking around with their guns drawn. This is, of course, due to the Powder Ganger threat. Now, we've killed all the Powder Gangers in the Bison Steve, but these folks have not returned to their homes because the sheriff is still dead. They don't feel safe leaving the safety of the Vicky and Vance. So before they'll leave, we gotta find a sheriff. Heading around back to the cashier, we see a number of safes, some of which are open. And it's here where we find Ruby Nash. Hello there. What brings you to Prim? Who are you? I'm Ruby Nash. Pleased to make your acquaintance. My husband and I are Prim long-timers. He fancies himself a traitor, and I know my way around the kitchen. What kind of stuff do you cook? My specialty is a rad scorpion venom casserole. It's more appetizing than it sounds. The venom has a sharp, smoky flavor. And it numbs your mouth so fierce you'll forget you ever had a tongue. It's perfectly safe. Long as you don't have sores in your mouth for the venom to find your blood. Cause that'll kill you dead. Mmm, I'd like some of that rad scorpion venom casserole. Does sound good, don't it? How many rad scorpion glands you got? Oh, I got a bunch of rad scorpion glands. Is that right? Then hand them over and I'll get to baking a whole batch of casseroles. She takes five glands and gives us five casseroles at a time. So even if we have a hundred glands on our inventory, we can only get the batches in stacks of five at a time. The food is all right for a normal playthrough. It grants one point of HP each second for 30 seconds, and it only costs three reds. But the great benefit to this food is if you play on hardcore mode, because it removes 100 starvation. If your survival skill is at 100, it removes a whopping 300 starvation and heals three hit points each second over the span of 30 seconds, dramatically improving its effect. Incidentally, the name of this unmarked quest is called Gland for some home cooking. Yeah. Anyway, thanks for the casserole, Ruby. Can you tell me more about Prim? My mother taught me never to say something lest it was nice. So I don't have nothing to say about Prim, for the time being at least. It's a sad state of affairs. Discuss it with Mr. Nash if you care to. Just makes me want to cry. All right, well, goodbye. Yeah, bye. That was one of the most pathetic farewells I've ever heard from an NPC in this game. Yeah, bye. Now, we find a lot of loot back here, but it's all set to owned, which means that if we try and take it, we'd be stealing. However, we can remove the owned marker on all of these items a little bit later. Heading to the back of the casino, we find one room with a closed door. Lying in the middle of the floor is a safe. Again, we can't loot it without stealing right now, but we'll be able to loot it later. Inside, we find some ammunition and some caps. On the wall above the couch is a newspaper clipping talking about some construction done to the Gamora Casino. Gamora got a new owner. The Aces Theater at the Tops Casino has got some new talent. But the thing to note is the headline to the bottom left. Resident splattered on Bison Steve roller coaster tracks. That's right, that's the Bison Steve just across the street. 
Why would the Vicky and Vance frame this newspaper clipping and put it in their casino? Well, I think Prim Slim revealed to us that the Bison Steve and the Vicky and Vance were not on the best of terms before the war. <laughs> and this may have been one way that the Vicky and Vance managerial staff told all their patrons that the Bison Steve was a dangerous place to visit. Talk about sleazy and underhanded. Although, maybe this was their way of doing a public service announcement. After all, some poor soul did die on the roller coaster. In here, we find a couple of magazines that we can't loot yet. Heading out and around the corner, we find the bar with not a whole lot to loot. And against the northern wall, we find the roulette and blackjack tables. But these are unmanned. There is no one to play poker with. On one of the tables, we find a big combat knife stuck in the table. Well, it's sad to see this casino in such a state. Let's see if we can get the Vicky and Vance up and running again by finding the town a brand new sheriff. Now, when we talked with Deputy Beagle, he gave us two suggestions. To ask the NCR if they could look out for the town, or to visit a sheriff that he heard was incarcerated in the NCR correctional facility. Well, let's explore the outcome of both choices. First, let's chat with the NCR. Heading back across the overpass to find the NCR camp, we can head on in to Lieutenant Hayes' tent. Hey, Lieutenant, Prim is in dire need of some real law. We know Prim is a great strategic point, and we aren't blind to the needs of the town, but we're barely holding our own against the powder gangers. We don't have the guns or the personnel needed to carry out our mission, much less take on defending this town as well. All right, well, what would you need to be convinced to take over protecting the town? What we need more than anything is bodies. If we had just one more squad, we could easily install a sheriff and still handle our primary objective of protecting the interstate south of here. If you'd like to see the NCR include protection of Prim and its duties, then you'll have to get some more troops up here. Knight at Mojave Outpost may be able to help. So we need to head on over to the Mojave Outpost to talk with Major Knight to see if he can send some support to Prim. Inside the main building, we find Major Knight and we can say, I'd like to talk with you about Prim. Prim? Hayes units are stationed up there. We're having problems with some of the NCRCF convicts. What can I help you with? You know, Prim has seen some better days. It has. It was a promising trade town before the escape at the correctional facility. Lost a good bit of money at the Vicky and Vance. Hayes is undermanned and is requesting some additional support. I'd like to help, but we can't spare any more units. We have to maintain a minimum headcount at the outpost. Orders from the west. After completing some of the quests around the Mojave outpost, we can use our influence to convince him, or we can pass a barter check of 20 to say, having Prim and the trade route under NCR control would help the west. I see the wisdom in that. I'll radio for a unit to head up to Prim and offer some additional support. With the support of Major Knight, we can head back to Lieutenant Hayes in his tent on the outskirts of Prim and say, I got extra troop support for Prim. Yeah, I just got word of that. There's a squad of rangers standing by. Sergeant McGee will take over as sheriff and the rangers will be his deputies. This town will be in NCR territory. This means that aside from protection, the citizens will also need to become registered NCR citizens and pay any appropriate and associated taxes. This is our last chance to back out if we don't believe the NCR is the best choice. But if we do, we can say, yes, tell the troops to come protect Prim. Roger. I'll radio them over now. And with that, we complete My Kind of Town. We find Sergeant McGee outside walking over to his new post as Sheriff of Prim. Prim is secure against outside threats. Be interesting to see how long the natives stay grateful. And we already detect a small superiority complex from the man. We can head on over to Prim to see how the townsfolk feel over their new situation. The first man we meet is Deputy Beagle, milling about town. Well, if it isn't the Lawbringer. What's your problem now, Beagle? My problem is that I'm no longer a deputy. I'm just a Beagle now. Apparently two and a half months of law enforcement experience doesn't count for anything. The new regime is just that. All new. He's rude. Don't tell him I said it. Prim has a sheriff now, just not as supportive as I would have hoped. Well, Beagle here thinks that McGee is rude. How much of that is true, and how much of it comes from Beagle's unique perception of life? 
Now that the town has a sheriff, the townsfolk leave the casino and head to their respective homes. We find Johnson Nash inside the Mojave Express, and we can hear his thoughts on the new sheriff situation. Heard it was you brought the law back to Prim, youngster. Hats off to you. How's Prim these days, Nash? We got rule of law again, but of the martial variety. NCR orders us around like junior soldiers. Better than lawlessness, though. So that's what happens if we choose Sergeant McGee. Now, Beagle did mention a sheriff incarcerated at the NCRCF, but there is a third option. Heading on into the Vicky and Vance Casino, we can have a chat with everyone's favorite cowboy hat wearing Protectron, Prim Slim. Howdy, partner. Welcome to the Vicky and Vance Casino and Museum. We find an option to reprogram Prim Slim to serve as Prim's sheriff. All we need are three fission batteries and four conductors. If we fail the science check or if we don't have the materials necessary... Ah, oh, shucks. System runtime error. Unable to initialize law enforcement protocols, partner. But if we pass the science check of 30... Law enforcement protocols reinstated, partner. Initializing use of force authorization. Authorization found. Yeah! Prim Slim becomes Sheriff of Prim, and we complete my kind of town. Heading on over to Deputy Beagle, we learn that Prim Slim fired him as deputy, but his criticism of the robot is a little different. Slim's all right. I don't wish him no harm, but the law to him is a set of logic. Not everything is black and white. Not sure a robot can ever understand that. You know, Deputy Beagle raises an interesting point. Maybe it would be better to have a human in charge of law here at Prim. I went on over to Johnson Nash, but he didn't have any new dialogue if we choose to make Prim Slim the sheriff, so I don't know what his thoughts are on the issue. But we do have the final option, and that's to find a sheriff at the NCRCF. Now, this prison is an interesting location, and it's here where we encounter the climax to the Powder Ganger story arc. I'm going to be saving this story for tomorrow's video. But to find find a sheriff, we go through the front door to the prison to the reception area. We see a bunch of tables laid out on a bunch of convicts eating food and drinking coffee. Sitting down at a table wearing a big black cowboy hat is a convict named Myers. Didn't know anyone would willingly walk into this place. Not unless they were looking for trouble. What's your story? What did you do before you ended up incarcerated here? I was a sheriff, believe it or not, for a small town far to the west of here. Short version is that sometimes justice is a little slow, and I helped speed it up one too many times. I'm not sorry for anything I did, but I will do the time. Fair enough trade if you ask me. Tell me more about what happened here in the prison. I understand that Cook was behind it all. I kept my head down the whole time. Didn't want any part of it. I stuck around, figuring the NCR would show up and put things back the way they were. No sense in making myself look guilty, right? Who's Cook? Some kind of anti-NCR rebel. Some people just don't like being pushed around and told what to do. Where can I find Cook? He went north with some of the other guys. Didn't say where. Didn't say why. All I know is he's got some kind of score to settle with the NCR. Well, if the NCR is gone, why are you still here? I'm not quite sure the kind of greeting NCR troopers will give an escaped con like myself. Figure it's better to stay put for now. Smart man. Well, with the NCR gone, who's in charge of the Powder Gangers? Right now, Eddie and his boys run the place. They've got the guns and the dynamite, so they call the shots. Say, I found this place that needs a good lawman like yourself. A man willing to make decisions that expedite the enforcement of law. How would you feel about becoming Prim's new sheriff? Assuming an NCR pardon comes with the job, and it had better. I also need to be able to do things my own way. Due process has its place. Sometimes it's just a waste of time. I'll need to know that I'm not going to end up right back in prison. Does that mean that you'll take the law into your own hands? When I need to? Yes. You know what? You got yourself a deal. Alright then. Guess I'll just make a quiet exit. No need for a goodbye party or anything. With that, he gets up and walks out the door of the prison. He heads on over to Prim, but before he can start work as a sheriff, we need to get him pardoned by the NCR. To do so, we head back to the Mojave Outpost and have a chat with Major Knight. Major, one of the convicts from the NCRCF is looking for a pardon so he can protect the town of Prim. One of the Powder Gangers? They've been nothing but trouble for us. Why would we want one of them anywhere in an official capacity? We can bribe this guy with 200 caps. 
Well, having a sheriff who was a convict is better than no sheriff at all. And if he has the qualifications... All right, hand it over. But I don't like doing things under the table, so instead we're going to convince him by passing a speech check of 30 to say his sentence was almost up, and he isn't tied to the Powder Gangers in any way. Hmm. All right. If his sentence was closing up, I can see about getting him pardoned. Prim is important to our trade up from California, so having someone there who owes us a favor, that couldn't hurt. Now that we've found a pardon for Myers, we can head on over to Prim and let him know that he is now Sheriff Myers. Thanks for getting me that pardon. Me and the boys will take good care of Prim. Don't you worry. Thanks, partner. Watch yourself out there. With that, we complete my con to town, and the residents of Prim pack up their stuff and leave the Vicky and Vance. We find Deputy Beagle on his way out to hear his thoughts. And just like with the other two sheriffs, we find that Myers has fired this guy as deputy, which makes a lot of sense. And Beagle has different criticism of Sheriff Myers. He's a good sheriff, but a hard man. He doesn't abide by anyone slinking by the rules. I guess there won't be any trouble, but the man's law is hard. And hard law is fine by me. Heading over to Johnson Nash at the Mojave Express. Got a new sheriff, as you know. Meyer's a bit rougher hewn than I might have liked, but he seems like a good sort. So far, so good. And it sounds like they're willing to give this guy a fair shake. When we see Sheriff Myers walking around the town of Prim... I can do right by this town. They were in need of some frontier justice. And I think Sheriff Myers is just the right kind of guy to give this place the kind of frontier justice it needs. I think all three of these options are good options, but I think Myers is the best one. As a robot, Prim Slim is unable to make decisions that require a human's ability to judge motive and interpret behavior. The NCR is a good option, but they're going to levy these poor people in too many taxes. Now, I'm all for people paying their fair share of taxes, but if a town can support itself without the need of the NCR, then there's no reason to pay the NCR taxes to begin with. I prefer Myers because he does take the law into his own hands. In our world, it's oftentimes dangerous and wrong to take the law into your own hands, but in the Fallout universe where there is no universally established system of law or system of governance, then the only justice is frontier justice, the kind of justice you take into your own hands. Now, I know that the NCR has been working hard on California and is now moving into Nevada, but they're not established everywhere yet. And until they are, little towns like Prim need to be responsible for taking care of themselves. And while they still do, there's no need for them to pay taxes to the NCR, so my choice is Sheriff Myers. Regardless of our choice, the people of the town of Prim are happy to have a sheriff. Thanks to you, Prim's on the way back up. With folks watching over us, I think the raiders will keep their distance. But we have one task left unfinished. We need to find the criminal couple of Sam and Pauline who stole the submachine gun from the Vicky and Vance Casino. Now, the holotape transcript we found on Prim Slim said that the criminal duo were heading towards Westside. Well, heading on over to Westside, we don't find much. We find a lot of ruins. The nearest marked location is going to be the H&H &H Tools Factory. If we head to the H&H &H Tools Factory and then head northwest, we eventually find a rickety old shack. It's located about halfway between the doors to West Side and the H&H &H Tools Factory. This shack is called the Wind's Hideout. Inside we find a couple, Pauline and Sammy. Now, as always, we can cut through the dialogue and just kill these people. Watch out! I'm hit! If we do, we get two unique items that we otherwise can't get in the game. Vance's lucky hat, which gives us one perception, and Vicky's bonnet, which also gives us one perception. I guess we are to believe that Pauline and Sammy stole these hats from the Vicky and Vance, that these were the very hats that Vicky and Vance were wearing the day they were killed in the car. These hats look unique, but otherwise they are unremarkable. Instead of killing them, we can load a previous save and have a conversation. What are you doing here, stranger? You looking to start some trouble? Who are you? Me? I'm Sammy of Sammy and Pauline, the Wasteland's most dangerous and notorious criminal duo. You better not mess with us or you'll end up face down in a shallow grave. Oh, you sound pretty tough, but I wonder why I've never heard of you. Simple. Up until now, we committed our crimes stealthily, leaving no evidence behind, so we never built a rep. But that's gonna change with our next score. You just wait and see. 
Oh, what's your plan? You'll have to ask Pauline about that. She's the brains of our operation. I'm the muscle. Well, all right. Heading on over to Pauline and that fancy hat of hers. You best not try any funny business, stranger. One word from me, and Vance will plant you in the ground. Who are you? I'm Pauline, of Sammy and Pauline, the Wasteland's most dangerous and notorious criminal couple. You'd best not mess with us, or you'll have a bullet hole where your eye used to be. Oh, well, you sound pretty tough, too. Why haven't I heard of you before? We ain't never heard of you either, so the not being impressed is mutual. Come a week or so, though, and everyone will have heard of Sammy and Pauline. Just you wait. What's your plan? Sammy and me got our hands on a powerful weapon not too long ago. Vance's gun. You know Vance, of Vance and Vicky? That gun's our shot at the big time. We're gonna sneak it in on the strip and rob one of the casinos. Maybe all of them. We'll be known as the greatest gunslingers to ever terrorize the wastelands. The gun is their shot at the big time. <laughs> we can say, your plan is gonna get you both killed. You'll see. You'll feel stupid that you made fun of us when you learn how rich we are. Or we can pass a 55 speech check to say, by golly, that's their greatest plan I've ever heard in my entire life. Really? You think so? We've only got the one gun and there's two of us. And we've never done anything like this before. We've never been on the strip either, so we don't know how many guards the casinos have. And I kept having these nightmares. What are we thinking? We're gonna get ourselves killed. Look. Tell Sammy to give you the gun, all right? Just take it. I don't want it around tempting us to do something stupid. Wow. That unraveled quickly. Heading on over to her husband, we can say, Pauline says you should give me the gun. Really? Oh, thank God. I love that woman, but I swear this time she was going to get us killed. The gun's in the safe. The combination's 5, 23, 34. Take it far away from here before she changes her mind. That safe combination, yeah. 5, 23, 34, incidentally, is the date that Bonnie and Clyde were killed. I'm thinking Pauline and Sammy are just a bunch of Bonnie and Clyde fans who took their role-playing a bit too far. We find the missing weapon inside the wind's safe, and everything in this shack is set to unknown so we can loot it all. Now, the weapon we recover is a remarkable little submachine gun. It's better than a typical 9mm SMG in three ways. It has a higher DPS of 17 compared to the standard 14, and it's faster than a standard gun doing 13 attacks per second compared to 11. However, it's not quite as fast as a 9mm submachine gun that has all mods attached. Its speed is 14.3. But despite this, the additional damage and the high attack speed brings the DPS of this gun to 221, which is greater than any other 9mm submachine gun in the game. It's also got a much larger magazine with double the ammo capacity of a typical 9mm SMG. It's a one-handed weapon, so unlike many SMGs we're used to, you just hold it like a pistol. And because the weapon had been locked under a glass case for 200 years, the texture of this thing looks brand new. No rust, no grime, it's a gorgeous little weapon. Now most players are gonna keep this for themselves. After all, Prim Slim didn't even know it was missing. However, if we want to turn it in, we can head back on over to the Vicky and Vance Casino to do so. But as soon as we enter... What are you doing here? This is our casino, punk. Punk? Hey, that's my line. Huh. You've got moxie, buddy. But we don't take kindly to tourists on our turf. 100 caps should cover this trip into our territory. Who are you? Are you... deserters? I like to think that we're prisoners of war that managed to escape before capture. I don't know how long it'll be before the Legion crosses the river, but sure as fuck, I don't want to be wearing an NCR uniform when they get here. Hey, look, I was just checking the place out. I'll, uh, I'll be on my way now. We don't take kindly to tourists on our turf. You're gonna need to pay a fine if you want to leave in one piece. 100 caps should cover it. Well, we could simply pay them. Thanks. We're leaving now. We don't want no more trouble. Which case they run off. Or we can say... You know, I don't have that many caps. All right. Since you look new and didn't know better, we'll cut you some slack. Fifty caps. Oh, fifty? Yeah, you know, I don't have that many caps either. That's all right. We'll take what we can from your body before the law shows up. Hey! Come on! Mm. 
Man, I am in love with this gun. None of these deserters have anything interesting on their corpses. Alternatively, if we want to find a non-violent solution, we can instead pass a speech check of 30 to say, Your turf? Guess the news hasn't reached you yet. Prim has law again. Fuck, we lose again. We heard Prim was ripe for the picking, so figured we could come here and shake down some of the suckers. We weren't expecting a sheriff here. We're just trying to put as many miles from NCR as we can. We don't want to be anywhere near New Vegas when the Legion crosses the river. So that's it? You've resorted to robbing and raiding to solve your problems? Our luck has gone south since we lost all of our money gambling in Vegas. We didn't go AWOL from duty to become raiders. But we've seen what the Legion does to people that survive their battles. We wanted to be gone before the fighting starts. And we heard there may be some safety up in New Canaan. If we're rude in any way, they get violent. For example, if we say, You're right, you're totally screwed. I'm getting tired of your chatter. Hand over a hundred caps or we start using you for target practice. And we get placed back in the threatening dialogue tree. Or we can reason with them further and say, Why not just turn yourselves in? No fucking way. We're deserters now. The NCR isn't going to throw us a ticker tape parade for going home. Well, they do have a few more troops than the four of you. No biggie there. We've been avoiding the patrols and staying low-key until this mess. I imagine the NCR doesn't deal with deserters kindly. Yeah. If we see the NCR, they'll be waiting for us with a bullet to the brain pan. So what are we supposed to do? Just run? It would be safer to run and find some place to hide. Maybe you're right. Come on, boys. Let's get the hell out of here before the law shows up. They leave the casino peacefully, and we can only hope that they have long, peaceful lives. If we choose to resolve this situation violently, then nothing changes inside the casino. But if we choose to resolve the situation peacefully, we are free to loot everything in the casino. Heading around back to the safes, we find that stack of ammunition and chems in one of the safes free for the taking, and we can unlock that big safe in the rear room and take the magazines that were on the nearby tables. And if we really don't want to keep this weapon, and instead we want to turn it in, we can head on over to Prim Slim. Howdy, partner. Any luck tracking down Vance's gun? I found the gun. Here it is. Those thieves had some gall stealing from a museum dedicated to romanticizing a couple of criminals. I'll make sure the gun ends up back on display. I thank you. Prim thanks you. And I do believe Vance would thank you if he could. And as a reward, we get 1,500 bottle caps. Sadly, despite what Prim Slim says, the gun does not go back on display, presumably so that we just don't go take it later. If we go on over to the sheriff's office, we see that Sheriff Myers has completely moved in. He's even cleaned up the place. The bodies of the former sheriff and his wife are gone. And with that, the town returns to normal. Nash goes back inside the Mojave Express and turns into a merchant. He's got a pretty good selection of ammunition. We can buy some caravan cards off of him. And if we wait three days and come back to the Vicky and Vance Casino, it functions like a normal casino. In the back room, we find a blackjack dealer, and we find people manning the roulette tables right next to the car. There's a cashier now to exchange our caps for chips. And we can only hope that the casino once again brings the town of Prim to prosperity. And that is the full story of the town of Prim and the Vicky and Vance Casino. These powder gangers have a lot to answer for. We will confront them in tomorrow's episode when we finally visit the NCR Correctional Facility. If you want to make sure that you don't miss that video, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. I've got a new shirt in the shop this week. Perfect spot for a Mirelurk den. This has been a long requested shirt design with a picture of X688 on the front saying his famous quote and a bunch of angry Mirelurks on the back. The shirt comes in a variety of styles including hoodies and in a variety of colors. You can find a link in the description below. And if you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you bright and early tomorrow morning with a brand new video.